Okay, good afternoon. Today's Shir Lele Yitzchak, Elish Ba Yitzchak Ben Bracha, Eli Melop and Lebi Yitzchak, Osher Shmuelchaim and Ephraim Vitziona, Esther Basara, Osher Ben Yosef, William and Helen, Elish Ba Rochel, Bas Yosef, Dove Ben Avraham, Tzvi Dove Ben Chaim Pesach, Yitzchak Ben Sarah, Devorah Bas Yitzchak, Avram and the Mordechai David, Ruven Ben Shmuel, Chana Golder Bas Yisrael, Chayim. Chaim ben Fege, Yaakov ben Yitzchak, Yeshua ben Shmuel, Mordechai Netzach ben Rivka, Zalman Lei ben Moshe, and Lishmas Ami Chai ben Ben Yaakov Leila Nishmatam. Today's topic is uh, our reply to the spies. Buy one, get six thirteen. Living in Eretz Yisrael is the greatest mitzvah. It's a vilda mitzvah. You do one, you get six thirteen. That's our proper response to the spies. The Ramban says something incredible. The Ramban tells us in Pasha Shlach Lecha, by rejecting Eretz Yisrael, the Jews not only rejected Eretz Yisrael, they not only rejected God, but they rejected the Avot. He says, hey, mardim ba'avotam. By rejecting Eretz Yisrael, the spies rebelled against Avram Yitzchak the Yaakov, because Avram Yitzchak the Yaakov, their most precious gift was Eretz Yisrael, and they rejected that. So by rejecting Israel, the Jews rejected Israel, God, and also the Avot. It's amazing that the Rambam tells us in Hilchas Tumas Meis, chapter 11, HaMahalach Be'eretz Akum Tome Shiva. According to the Rambam, if you walk in Crown Heights or Borough Park, you become Tome for seven days. L'chein, says Rambam, Kohen V'nazir, so the Rambam rules that, and, and the Chabadniks, they follow the Rambam, right? So the Rambam rules that a Kohen and a Nazir are not allowed to live in Chutz Loretz. Because Chutz Loretz is Metama Shiva, Yiddish Avram. You know any Kohanim that live in Philadelphia? The Rambam Shita is in Hilchus Tumas Meis chapter 11 that a Kohen and a Nazir are not permitted to live in Chutz Loretz because anyone who lives in Chutz Loretz is Tumas Shiva. So the question is, how could you be a Frum Cohen in Crown Heights? Okay, Tzorech Iyun. Okay? So, and the Rambam tells us in Hilchas Ishus that if the husband wants to make Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael and she doesn't want, then he divorces her without a Tuba. If she wants to make an Aliyah and he doesn't want, then what? He has to give her a Ksuba. So the question is, it's so important to live in Israel, how come the Rambam doesn't count living in Israel as what? As a mitzvah. So that's the question everybody asks. Living in Israel is such a great mitzvah, how come the Rambam doesn't count it in the Tariyag mitzvot? So this question is asked by the Tzitz Eliezer and also the Chazoinish. So a Jew enters a kasha with not a kasha. So to answer why the Rambam doesn't count living in Israel as a mitzvah, the Tzitz Eliezer Chazoyinish says, he looked at the Hagdama to the Rambam Sefer Mitzvot. He says, there's a mitzvah in the Torah, Kedoshim Tiyu, be holy. So how come I don't count that as a mitzvah, says Rambam? So the Rambam says, a mitzvah is a prat. Something which is a klal, like Kedoshim Tiyu, I can't count. The tafkir of all the mitzvahs is Kedoshim Tiyu. So therefore, I don't count Kedoshim Tiyu as a mitzvah, because that's the end game. The mitzvahs are pratim, to get to the goal of what? Kedoshim tiyu. That's what the Rambam says in his Akdama to Sefer Mitzvah. Says the Tzitz Eliezer and Chazoyinish, the Rambam gave you the football, now go with it. The reason the Rambam doesn't count Yishev et as a mitzvah, for the same reason he doesn't count Kedoshim tiyu as a mitzvah. Because the purpose of all the mitzvahs is what? To live in Israel. So that's not a mitzvah, that's the end game. And we'll see soon on our sheets, just like Kedoshim Tiyu cannot be a mitzvah, because the goal of all mitzvahs is to what? Attain Kedusha. So the same thing, living in Israel is like Kedoshim Tiyu. It can't be a mitzvah, Chava, because that's the end game. The purpose of the mitzvot is to be holy and to do them in Eretz Yisrael, so it can't be a mitzvah, because it's the Koilo Kala Tarakula. So says the Chazoyinish and the Tzitz Eliezer, both great Haredi rabbis. So not the Rambam doesn't count it, not because it's less than a mitzvah, but because, Ira, it's what? It's, it's, more. it's more. For the same reason, it doesn't count Kedoshim Tiyu, right, Rivka? Okay. The Tzitz Eliezer passed away recently. 
Chazoynish passed away in 51. The Chetzitz Eliezer just passed away recently. So uh, he, in his book, Chetzitz Eliezer on Yishuv Ech Yisrael, he gives this answer why the Rambam doesn't count uh, living in Israel as a mitzvah for the same reason he doesn't count uh, Kedoshim Tiyu. But anyway, living in Israel is the greatest mitzvah. Let's look at our source sheets, side number two. Side number two, why it's so important to live in Israel. Why it's buy one, get 613. Jews love bargains, right? In Yiddish you say, a vilda metzia, Ira. Vilda metzia, buy one, get 613, yes? So, uh, the Rebbe didn't live I don't know. It's a good question. You have to ask uh, those people, you know, I don't know. So let's go to sources here and, and see what the story is, right? Source, uh, side number two. You have it, Ira? Side number two. I hope everybody has a paper. Thanks to Yehuda. This is the Ramban al Vayikva. He is writing why living in Israel is the greatest of all mitzvot. Side number two, the Ramban al Vayikra. He says, Hichmer akosse barayot bava oretz. He says, committing sexual sins in Israel is worse than committing it somewhere else. Why is that? Or doing any sin in Israel is worse than doing it anywhere else. Why is that? Because this is Armon Shal Melech, Evelyn. This is the Armon Shal Melech. When you do an Avera in the king's palace, it's worse than doing an Avera in the king's garage, right? So we are living in the Armon Shal Melech, so he says on side number two, Hichmir Akosse Barayot Baba Oretz. And he goes on, he says that Kichelak Hashem Amo, that all of the nations, they are underneath Mazolot, Kochav or Mazol, every nation has a heavenly angel that's in charge of that nation. And he quotes the Pasuk in uh, Doniel, I have it underlined, Sar Malchus Paras, Omad, Omed Lenegdi, Sar Yavon. So he, Daniel says he had a heavenly vision and he saw that each one of the EU, I don't know where England is now, England is no longer part of the EU. So what happens to their heavenly angel? Huh? Bigger one. So each, you look in Daniel 10, each nation has a heavenly governor or a heavenly minister that represents it in heaven. And they are called Malachim, right? But Eretz Yisrael has no what? Have no heavenly minister. All the nations, God set up the system that they are governed and controlled by heavenly ministers. They're called Sar Malchus Paras, Sar Yavan, Sar United States. Each nation in the world has a heavenly minister that's in charge. Malk, if you want, we can tell the lady to make it a little cooler. You can tell the lady to, to make it a little cooler. But anyway, the only nation that doesn't have a the only nation that doesn't have a heavenly minister is what? Is Eretz Yisrael. Abel Eretz Yisrael, he says, Hashem anichbat, hu elakeu lehim, adoin adoinim. Eretz Yisrael doesn't have a, here it's a local call, right? So the Ramban is saying, lo inosan alem in amalachim. If you want to have a direct personal relationship with God, that's only where in Eretz Yisrael. Not even in Borough Park. Why, Avram? Because Borough Park has a heavenly minister that's what? Controlling it. <coughs> and he goes on here, The entire earth belongs to God. But only Eretz Yisrael is what? Directly controlled by a Kodesh Baruch Hu and is not under the jurisdiction of what? Of a heavenly minister or a heavenly angel. And therefore, he says, you skip down where it says, Hine bechutz laaretz. Says, Hine bechutz laaretz. See, Afa pisha hakol Hashem anichbad. Even though you're davening to Hashem in chutz laaretz, ain't tahara bo shalema. No matter how charedi you are in chutz laaretz, your tahara, your purity cannot be complete. Why is that? Bavur, in the middle of the side two, bavur ha mishartim ha moshlim aleo. Because all the countries of Chutzlaret are under, God appointed these spiritual robots to control these countries. 
Va'amim to'im, and people make a mistake and they think that since this heavenly minister is controlling this country, then this heavenly minister has independent power and they pray to that heavenly minister and that's classic Avodah Zarah. Praying to an angel is classic Avodah Zarah. So therefore, to have a direct relationship with God that can only be where? Only in Eretz Yisrael. But some people say, don't confuse me uh, with the facts, all right? And therefore, please turn off the phone. And therefore, the, uh, the Sifri tells us, the bottom of side number two, Anyone that lives outside of Israel, including Borough Park maybe, is like someone who has no God. The bottom of side number two, I have it underlined there, you have it, Avram. Kol adar b'chutz l'aretz, dome kimi she'en lo yelaha, he's like someone who has no God. How does the Sifri know that? Shenema lo seis lochem es Eretz Kenan, lios lochem l'elohim. Where am I your God? In Eretz Kenan. But outside of Israel, it's like we have no God. Why should it be like that? It's terrible. Why should it be like that? And he brings a proof from King David. In Samuel 1, who was the original fugitive before David Jansen? Who? David Amela. David. David was a fugitive before David Jansen. He was hunted by uh, Shaul Amelech, and he had to what? Hide out in Chutzloretz. And he says, Ki Gershuni Hayom, he tells Shaul, he sends Shaul an email. You have driven me out today, the bottom of side number two. You have it, Moshe. Mr. Peach Panachlas Hashem. You have driven me out from the inheritance of God, Lamor, Lech Avod Elhim Acherim. Go worship, Elhim uh, Acherim means go worship Getzkis. Now we don't find, Rivka, that Shaul HaMelech ever told David to what? Go worship Getzkis. So how could King David in Samuel 1, chapter 26, accuse Shaul HaMelech of what? Of telling David to go worship Elhim Acherim. Who told David to serve uh, idols? Huh? But, so the Sifri learns from this puzzle, since Shaul HaMelech forced King David to what? To flee Eretz Yisrael, to leave the Holy Land, it's as if Shaul HaMelech forced David to what? Worship idols. Isn't that incredible? One of the big three to die for. Reading side number two, the bottom. Kol Adar B'chutzlar, it's Dome, Kimi Sheinu, Elahai. And so he says, the bottom of side number two. So the Gemara Subas and Sefri learns out that anyone who lives outside of Israel is like worshiping idols, because that's why King David accused Saul of forcing him to worship idols, because he forced him to flee Eretz Israel. So the question is why? Why is living outside of Israel like you worship idols? So the Ramban explains, because since each country is governed by a heavenly minister, God appointed that heavenly minister. So even though you're praying to God, who intercepts the prayers? It's the heavenly minister. So it looks like idol worship, even though you're praying to God. But each country has a heavenly minister in charge of it who intercepts the prayers. It's called running interference. So Avram, it looks like what? You're praying to the Malach, even though you're not. Because the very fact that you're davening in Chutzlaret, the Malach is in charge. So it looks like what? If it, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, maybe it's a duck. Ooh. What? He turns it over, but he, he is like the intermediary. Why is there an intermediary? Why does God choose that? You got to ask Daniel chapter 10. Why does God choose to run the world through heavenly ministers. A human king needs ministers to run the show. God doesn't need any ministers. The, the answer might be Rivka because God governs the world the way a human king governs the world. Whatever is true in the physical world is also true in the spiritual world. Since in the physical world, kings have what? ministers that are in charge of provinces. So Kurdish Baruch Hu chooses to govern the world like a human king governs his country. 
But Eretz Yisrael is the only country where there is no heavenly minister in charge. So if you want to have a direct personal relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it can only be Rivka where? In Pisgat Zev. I mean in uh, Rechavia, Rishalayim. Eretz Yisrael, yes? What? When Speak some, up. When someone goes to a camera of a tzaddik, yeah. they're not praying to the tzaddik, they're praying to the tzaddik. They're praying to the tzaddik. In the schus of the tzaddik, who set the tone? Kolei ben Yefunan, this week's parasha. It says, Vayov vayat chevron. Where is the custom to pray at the, tzad, the grave of a tzaddik? Kolei ben Yefunan. He went to chevron, right? Yeah. Didn't daven to the dead uh, patriarchs. He daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the schus of the tzaddikim. So some people mix it up. We're not davening to the dead guy, chas v'sholem. That's the wrong religion. We're davening to Kudish Baruch Hu in the schus of the tzaddik that's buried there. Who taught us that? Kolei ben Yifuna in this week's parasha, vayovay at Chevron. He came to Chevron, not they. Side number, uh, side number three, please turn it over, yes. Number three, number three, other side, yes. Yes? Yes? That who? Well, uh, yes, what you say is so. Yeah. We have free will. You make the call, right? God set up the system. You want to stumble, stumble. But we have free will to do the right thing. When the going gets tough, the tough get going, or they go shopping. <laughs> Right, Abraham? We shall overcome. God gives us tests. The only way to what? To improve spiritually is to go through difficult tests. So therefore, God gives us this difficult test in order to what? To grow spiritually. Otherwise, you remain what? A spiritual cripple. Abraham, remember? No pain, no gain. The Pepsi commercial, remember? No pain, no gain. Remember the Pepsi commercial? That's true, if that's true in the physical world, no pain, no gain, then certainly true, Rifkin, the spiritual world. Right? You want to build your muscles, you have to go through hard time, hard test. Otherwise, you get spiritual flabby. Why do I need to govern through the school of somebody else? What? Okay. But you're davening to English Baruch in the school of the Tzaddik, right? So uh, it helps you, it psychs you up. When you go to the grave of a tzaddik, you daven with more kavana. It's psychological effect. You're not chalila davening to the dead guy. Avram, that's the wrong religion. Psychologically, you daven with more kavana. When you're near the grave of a tzaddik, it puts you in the mood. Yeah, because, you know, after 120, I'll be there. So it puts you in the mood to daven with kavana. Don't you see? Side number three. So amazing, look at side number three. In the Tosefta, Ab Yaakov Avinu is running away from uh, his brother, and he makes a vow on top of side number three. You have it, Masha? It says, the shafti b'sholam abeit avi, when I return to peace to my father's house, where is he going now? He's going to Ocean Parkway. He's, I mean, he's going to Syria. A lot of Syrians in Ocean Parkway. So he says, when you might come back to my father's house, where's my father's house? In Be'er Sheva, when I come back. Only then will God be a God for me. What do you mean? And when I'm in Ocean Parkway, I have no God. Why does Yaakov say, only when I come back to my father's house in Be'er Sheva, then God will be a God for me. Implying when he's in Syria, he has no God. Isn't that incredible? Kozman she'atem be'eretz kenan, yisulchem le'elohim. I don't know how they learned this in Borough Park, Malka. They must skip this. Maybe we should fax it to them. Kozman she'atem be'eretz kenan, as long as you live in Israel, yisulchem le'elohim. Outside of Israel, ain't atem be'eretz kenan, ain't ani lechem le'elohim. I am not your God. Now, why does the Torah keep referring Zizel to the land of Israel, the land of Canaan? Now, if you ever wonder about, why does the Torah keep referring to the land of Israel as Eretz Canaan? That's a, That's a great question. Because we can 
can't marry Canaan. Fasten your seatbelts. Canaan is the symbol of corruption and immorality. Canaan is a symbol of immorality and corruption. So why does the Torah keep referring to Israel as the land of Canaan? Because the Maraglim said, there's no mitzvah to live here. There's so much Chil Shabbos. There's a, who knows what, the immorality here. No mitzvah to live here. Wrong. Even if people are committing acts of Canaan in Eretz er, er Yisrael, it does not negate the Kedushah. Avram, hear this word. It's not my word, it's the word from Rav Soloveitchik. Canaan is a symbol of immorality. Many even say there's no mitzvah to live here because it's, there's corruption and there's Chil Shabbos and worse things going on. I don't want to say what. So the Torah Dafke refers to Israel as the land of Canaan. That even though there is a morality here, the mitzvah to live here is not canceled. The Kedusha is not canceled, despite if people here act like Canaanites, loyalenu, it does not negate the Kedusha. It does not cancel the mitzvah. Otherwise, there's no reason, Rabbi Abraham, why God should keep referring to the land of Israel as the land of Canaan. Afa Pikain, even though some Yidin act like Canaanites, Afa Pikain, the mitzvah of Yishu et Yisrael, Adai and Kayam, the Kedusha is not canceled. But Yaakov said, only when I come back to my father's house in Eretz Yisrael, only then, the Haya Hashem li lelohim, implying that the whole time when he's not in Israel, Nebuch, then he has no God. That's pretty uh, amazing. Pretty amazing, right? Okay, that's a simple explanation. For that, you don't need me, right? Right? Now, look at the next paragraph on side number three. You see that, Rabbi Avron? This year is in your honor, of Aaron's honor. Side number three, second paragraph. You have it? Umina inyan aze omru besifri, valate mehera, sometimes devorai, afa pisha ni begale eschem in oretz and chutz loretz, even though you live in chutz loretz, heyu metzionim be mitzvot. Continue to do mitzvot in chutz loretz. Why? Why do you do mitzvot in chutz loretz? Keshe tachzeru, only when you come back, lo yu alechem chadoshim, they shouldn't what? Forget. Feel strange and new to you. So when you're doing mitzvahs and chutz laaretz, says the Ramban, it's a sefri, not the Ramban, you're only practicing. So you shouldn't forget how to do it, what? Forget. When you come back home. So how long can you practice in Borough Park? It's about time to do it for keeps, <laughs> right? Right? Moshallah, oh, don't listen to this incredible Moshallah Baron. The Melech Shakos Ishta, the king, had a quarrel with the queen. The Shalchala Beisavia, and he sent the, the queen out from his palace, go back to your father's house. The Chazab, she went back to her father's house, Omela. So he told the queen, continue to what? Wear your tachshitin, continue to wear your, your jewelry, because when you come back to me, I'll recognize you. It won't be new. So the reason why we do mitzvahs and chutz laaretz is only as practice, so when we come back, it won't be weird and strange to us. Now, and that's even tefillin. Choy v'saguf, tefillin and mezuzah. The Sifri brings example. You see, I have it underlined even tefillin. The Sifri says that even putting on tefillin and chutz laaretz is only what? Is only practicing. Tefillin, that's a choy v'saguf, you do it only, it shouldn't appear new to you when you come back. Ki ikakola mitzvot, the essence of doing mitzvot is rak liyoshem be'eretz Hashem. The great Nachmanides is only when you learn, you live in Israel. Lefikach omru sefri, have it underlined, you have it, Masha. V'yirishtem v'yishaftem ba, u'shmartem lasot, you shall dwell in the land in order to observe to do the mitzvot. Yeshivat Eretz Yisrael, Shkula, Keneget Kol HaMitzah Sheba Torah. Jews love bargains. Evelyn, buy one, get 613 gold. Isn't that amazing? The mitzvah of living in Eretz Yisrael is equal to all the other mitzvahs in the Torah. So some people will say, that's a Sifri 2,000 years ago, Ira. Maybe it's only talking the days when the temple stood. Says the Pischei Tshuva, 
in Evan or Ezra 75. Pischei Tshuva was a Haredi who lived about 250 years ago, and he says that living in Israel is the greatest mitzvah, af bezman hazeh. What does that mean? Even today, even today, and everybody follows the Pischei Tshuva, Malka, Haredim, Hasidim, the Pischei Tshuva in Evan Ezer, chapter I and He in the Shulchan Aruch says that this is free, that living in Israel is buy one, get 613, is af bezman hazeh, even today as well living in the land of Israel. Okay? So, <clears throat> so living in the in land of Israel is the greatest of all mitzvot. Is the greatest of all mitzvot. And the reason why the Ramam doesn't count it, says Tzitz uh, Eliezer and the Chazor uh, not because it's less, but because it's more than the mitzvot. It's the end game. It's the goal of all mitzvot. So the question is, when you sit in the sukkah, you make a bracha, right? So living in Israel, Ira, why don't you make a bracha? When you sit in the sukkah, you ask, what bracha? Asher kirishonu b'mseisa v'tzivanu, leishe v'asukah. So how come every morning we wake up, Abraham, in Ashkelon, and we don't make the bracha, leishe v'eret Yisrael? Huh? So that's, that's, a, that's a kasha. Why is there no birchat ha-mitzvah on yishe v'eret Yisrael? Because there's no chiyuv. What do you mean there's no chiyuv? <laughs> I mean to say... What do you mean there's no chiyuv? What do you mean there's no chiyuv? <laughs> Some people say it's a kiyuv mitzvah. So is wearing tzitzis. You don't have to wear a beged of arba kanfois. It's a kiyuv mitzvah. So why when I put on tzitzis I make a bracha? I don't have to wear a beged of four corners. If I choose to wear a beged of four corners, then I put on tzitzit, but I don't have to, and yet I make a bracha. Shelly, I make a bracha on what? On tzitzis. So what am I, on chopped liver? So living in Israel, which is greater than all the mitzvahs, how come there is no bracha? So the answer is, there is. The answer, what? Shirley, the answer is, there is. Look at Devorim chapter 8. I don't know if you have it on your sheets. Um, it would be the bottom of side three. It says, Gam Berchat HaMitzvah. You have that? In my handwriting or not? No? Gam. Mm. No, I'm on top of that, can I just see that paper a second? Uh, no, I didn't write it on. Okay. Well, I'll read it to you then. Oh. No, I kept you in the dark, so I'll read it to you. Okay? Thank you. Devorim 8. You'll take my word for it. You get home, you look it up. Devorim chapter 8 says, V'yechalto v'savato v'rachto es Hashem alehecho al oretz ha-tova. Deuteronomy 8. V'yechalto, you shall eat. V'savato, you shall be satisfied. Some people are never satisfied. Who said that? Ralph Cramden. Some people are never satisfied. But... The Torah says a Jew, Abraham, should always be satisfied. Right, Lillian? V'achalta v'savata, eat and be satisfied. U'barachta Hashem alehecha al oretz But that's only you... When you bench, you're doing a twofer, Shirley. But what if you don't... Have in mind when you bench, you're doing a twofer. You're blessing God for the falafel and for living in Rechavia. You didn't know that. Glad you came today. It's a twofer. Every time you bench, you're doing the bracha. The Torah, Deuteronomy 8. V'achalta v'savata v'rachta Hashem al-Kecha al ha'aretz ha So I heard this great Kabbalist of Yaakov Peretz. He lives in the Rova. He says, to make this bracha and chutz l'aretz, ulai zeh bracha l'avatala. That's what he said. Rav Yaakov Peretz, a great Bukubal in the old city, said, how do you make this brach on Staten Island? You're supposed to bless God, al oretz ha So if you eat and you bench outside of Israel, it's not the oretz ha-tova. Ulai zeh brach That's pretty amazing. So Baruch Hashem, that we have this chus to what? To live in there to Israel. So next time we bench, Mickey, we have to have in mind, Sarah, we're doing a twofer. You didn't know that. Good thing you came today. Your wife said we should have bread first thing in the morning. Now I know why. And they have bread first thing in the morning. 
And when you're benching, have in mind, you're using the same language of Devorim chapter 8. You're blessing God for the food and Aoretz HaTova. Aoretz HaTova, Baruch HaTu Hashem, Aoretz. You mentioned Aoretz before the bread. Baruch HaTu Hashem, Aoretz. For Ashkelon. And only then Mozon. So you're putting the land before what? Oretz a la mozon. And the Vilna Gaon says something amazing. The Vilna Gaon tried to come here. You know that? Yeah. The Vilna Gaon, but he got shipwrecked. But his Talmudim came here before Herzl. In 1802, they came. His Tal the Vilna Gaon was a great lover of Zion. He tried to come. He was shipwrecked. And the pirates almost killed him. But his Talmudim came in 1802, way before Herzl had any idea. So he says as follows, when you make the bracha, motzi lechem min ha'aretz, that's not upan 103. The Vilna Gaon knew Hebrew very well. So he said, the bracha should be a motzi lechem min ha'adama. Ask any upan teacher. Ha motzi lechem min ha'adama. What's ha motzi lechem min ha'aretz? God brings forth bread from the land, from the land. This land is your land, this land is my land. Says the Vilna Gon, Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz, not the hadama. When I'm eating bread in Vilna, it's only the schus of Pisgazev. You hear what the Vilna Gon said, Lillian? Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. When you're eating bread in Crown Heights, or even in Lakewood, it's only in the schus ira of ha'aretz. I think it's called the trickle down effect. Yeah, right from God's bracha comes to Oretz, and from there it goes all the way to what? Philadelphia. City of brotherly love. I don't know. <laughs> but isn't that amazing? So next time we bench and we make a bracha, uh, in Oretz, we have to appreciate that we are doing the real thing. Remember Coca-Cola, it's the real thing? This is the real thing. In Chutz Laaretz, you're only practicing how to serve God. You know, who knows baseball here? Yeah. Dizzy Dean, how long can you warm up in the bullpen? <laughs> right, you're warming up in the bullpen, but how long can you warm up in the bullpen? Dizzy Dean warms up, but then he goes to pitch. But if you're living in Borough Park, you're constantly warming up in the bullpen. Don't you want to pitch in the major leagues? <laughs> That's why they call him Dizzy. Dizzy Dean, you gotta right? Anyway, look at the bottom of the sheet. Uh, the bottom of the sheet, this is in my hand. This is from Yecheskel Lamed Vav. God has a, a gripe with us. He tells Ezekiel chapter 36, Ira. You have it? The bottom of side number three, this is in my handwriting. The Yidden came among the nations that they came there. Vayechalalu Hashem Kachi. And the Jews have desecrated my holy name. How did the Jews desecrate my holy name? Be'amorlehem. When the Goyim say to the Yidden, Am Hashem Ele. You are the nation of God. Umeyartza Yotzu. And you left such a beautiful country? Eretz Yisrael is the envy of the entire world, the leader in science, high tech, medicine, smartphones, dumb phones, in military, in everything. How could you leave such a wonderful country? That's what the Goyim say to the Yid. What are you doing here? So the very fact that Jews live where? In Chutzlar, it says, God, Yecheskel, that constitutes a terrible what? A terrible Chil Hashem. A terrible Chil Hashem. But some people just don't get it. Abraham, some people say, don't confuse me with the facts. Uh, my mind is what? Made is made up. So that's why the Arabs are fighting with us? What? Because we don't want the land anyway. We don't want it enough. enough. We don't appreciate it enough. Huh? And Arabs are trying to get free rent right. something we don't appreciate. Right. Yeah. What about the Saudi Arabia? I don't know. I don't know, but uh, so what are the Satmashita is? What's the Satmashita? 
Yeah. Lots of them bring them back. It's but not true. They come here to live? Sure, yeah. There's a group. There's something else. Yeah. Right. It's not the whole group. Yeah. What? What? It's not just the whole group. Not everyone group. 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 And that's it. Not everybody. Also. Also. But it's just amazing that the Rambam in Hilchas Malachim, the Rambam did not engage in exaggeration, Ira. The Rambam in Hilchas Malachim, chapter 5, halacha 12. You don't have it, but you can get home, you can look it up. The Rambam, Hilchas Malachim, the Rambam puts the laws of living in Israel in the laws of kings. Why? Because when you live in Israel, you're a king. You're a Sarah. The Rambam puts the laws of living in Israel in the laws of kings. Why, Lillian? Because when you live in Israel, you're a king. So he says in Laws of Kings, chapter 5, law 12. La Olam, Yadir Adam, Be'eretz Yisrael, Aphilab Ir Shuruba Goyim. A person should always live in Eretz Yisrael, even if the city is what? Majority Goyim. Val Yodor Bechutz Loretz, and not live in Shmutz Loretz. Aphilab Ir Shuruba Yisrael. Rather live in Israel, even if the city is all Goyim, and you're the only Yid, rather live in Israel, and don't live in the Chutz Laretz, even if the whole city is what? Jewish. Jewish. Yes? You didn't say the second You said that? The Rambam, Hilchas Malachim, Perig Hey, Allah Yud Bet. La'olam Yadur Adam Be'eretz Yisrael, Afila Be'ir Shuruba Goyim. Better live in Eretz Yisrael, even if the whole city is Goyim. Val Yudur Bechutz Laretz, and don't live in Chutz Laretz, even if the city is what? All Jewish. Why? Shekol Ayotze Lechutz Laretz, anyone that leaves Israel and goes to Chutz Laretz, Kilu Oved Avod Zara. Kilu Oved Avod Zara. Shenema, he quotes the Pesach in the book of uh, Samuel that we quoted before, on side number two, where Shmuel, Aleph, chapter 26, where King David says, to Shaul, he sent him an email, Kigushuni Hayom, you drove me out today, Mr. Peach Panachla Sashem. You drove me out from God's Nachala. What does God's Nachla mean? Inheritance? Lamor, Lechavod, Elhim Acherim. So the very fact that, that King David was forced to flee Israel, he fought Shaul as if Shaul would what? Force him to what? To worship, uh, to worship, to worship Avodah Zara, to worship Avodah Zara. Yes. Yeah. So the Satmar say because they, 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 there's a Good Morning Supers page one ten says that God made an oath with the Jews that they're not going to force their way into Eretz Yisrael. It's a Good Morning Supers page one ten. Come sure, sure. God made the Jews swear an oath that the Yidden will not force their way into Eretz Yisrael. There are two strong answers, Yisrael, for this. Number one, that's Agada Tegemara. Nachmanides already told us, but he debated Pablo Cristiani, the disputation at Barcelona. You can, there's a film made about it, you know that? You can look it up on YouTube. Disputation at, at Barcelona. The Ramban already points out that the Talmud consists of two sections, Halakha and Agada. Right. Only the Halakhic part of the Talmud must be taken literally. The Agada part, Sarah, which is what? That Moshe Rabbeinu was 10 feet tall and Og Melech Haboshan ripped up a mountain like Everest and that God made the Jews swear that Agada. And that's only a metaphor not to be taken literally. And the proof is that the Rambam it is a strictly halacha code, never quotes any Agadat Gemara. The Rambam doesn't bring this Gemara, God's making us swear, because the Rambam only deals with the halachic part of the Talmud. That must be taken literally. The, the Agadic part of the Talmud is a metaphor not to be taken literally. That's one answer. The second answer is that we're not supposed to force a way to Eretz Yisrael. We didn't. The UN gave it to us. So even if you want to say that you will accept this Agatha Gemara, we didn't force our way 
into Eretz Yisrael. The United Nations voted for Eretz Yisrael. So we're not going against the nations. The they agreed to give us the land, the Jewish state in 48. So those are two answers why that Problem is not a problem, it's just a manufactured problem as a cop out. Right. Okay, that makes no. Yeah, go ahead. What about also that the Goyim didn't fulfill their part of the promise? They have persecuted us for years, and oh, yes. then it ended up. That's another, there are many answers to that question. Right. Where's the man says it was the, the uh, British mandate? You said British mandate, but in just 1948, the Jewish state in 48. Right. right? So we didn't force our way. It was uh, granted to us by the nations of the world. No, right. Yes? That was only a recommendation. It has no strength at all. What? The UN partitioned Israel. It was the General Assembly. Doesn't matter. That's the nation. The UN represents the nation. So it's not a problem. We didn't force our way in. It was given to us. And okay. But the UN passed the. Re by this something in Milan, in Milan. Whatever. There was a 1951 nations voted. But the simple answer is that this Agadata Gemara, Agadata is not to be taken literally. Many people get mixed up. They think it literal. Moshe Rabbeinu was 10 feet tall. Uh, could he play for the NBA? So the Marsha says already, Rabbi Abraham, it's amazing, Rashaw writing in the year 1550, when you, a guy is a, is a real VIP, you say, that guy is 10 feet tall. Don't you say that? So the Rashaw writing in 1550, said when the Talmud says Moshe was 10 amas tall, it's only a guzma. How do you say a guzma? An exaggeration. Since he gave us the 10 commandments, in our eyes he appeared as 10 amas tall. In our eyes, he appeared 10 hours tall. And even in English, you say, wow, that guy is 10 feet tall. Like it's not to be taken literally. That's like the Moroccan thought they were grasshoppers. The Moroccan said, well, grasshoppers, right? That's an exaggeration, right? They exaggerated in order to make the Jews what? Panica, panica, to demoralize the Jewish people, like the modern day uh, Peace Now or J Street. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said that peace now is the modern day Miraglim. The Their purpose, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Zechus Hagrocho said that peace now is the modern day Miraglim. Those Jews that breaking the silence, their purpose is to demoralize the state of Israel, to make us lose courage, to frighten us, to hand over our precious land to Abu Mamzer. Right? That, that, that is Maraglim. So nothing has changed in 3,328 years. That's why the Torah writes the Maraglim story. The Torah is not a history book, Chava. Why do you know about the Maraglim? Because unfortunately, the Maraglim syndrome is very much alive today. So the Torah is not telling me ancient history. The Torah is telling the syndrome exists, and great people can be Maraglim. They all wore strimals and kapotas. Russia B'nai Yisrael, Hema. Abraham, who was the Miraglim? Torah says that each was a chief rabbi. Great people. But the Zoyar says they were afraid they're going to lose their position. You hear this? In the Midbar, the Zoyar Kodesh says, it's not me. In the Midbar, they were chief rabbis, secretary with a Volvo, right? that a lot of power and authority and prestige. You come to Pizgazev, Yiddish is say, Ois Kapolich Macher. Uh, no more Nesim. No more uh, princes. We're going to have a king now. These great chief rabbis will lose their jobs. No more secretary, no more Volvo, no more title Nasi. They'll have to become a traveling salesman. So to protect their position and their kavod, they sabotage, Israel is no good. And Nebuch, I don't want to say, but rabbis in the Chutz Loretz, a lot of them say, don't go to Israel. What are you looking for? Sharona, I don't want to say, maybe I shouldn't talk. But um, 
Rabbis of Chutz Laaretz, they say, what are you coming here for? There's no reason. The chief rabbi of France and also of Holland, there's no reason to make Aliyah. We are fine here. The government protects us. There's armed guards in front of the schools in Paris and in Amsterdam. Why make Aliyah? Isn't that Miraglim talk? But they also wore a strimal and they had a kapata. What? What did they say? They came here and they made Make excuses not to come to Israel. They don't want to lose their positions, yeah, Nebuch. It's the Maraglim syndrome. <coughs> Nebuch. The Maraglim syndrome. I better not to talk. But anyway, we have to be aware. We have to do what the Torah tells us. Did you ever buy the book Eim Habonim Semecha? By Rabbi Teichtel? You never bought this book? It's the best. The best, it's a life game changer. Aim Habonim Smecha. What's amazing about this book, uh, it's called Aim Habonim Smecha, which is a quote from Tilim. The mother of children is happy when her kids come home. Who's the mother of children? Eretz Yisrael is happy when the kids come home. Rabbi Teichtel. What's amazing about this book, Avram? Rabbi Teichtel. Rabbi Teichtel wrote this book in 1944 in Hungary, hiding in an attic at the height of the Holocaust. Now, what's amazing about this book, if Rav Cook would write it, he was the Av Bezdin of Satmar, this Rav Teichtel. The Av Bezdin of Satmar. Before the war, he wrote Tzioinim, Rishoyim, Israel, Oy, Rishoyim, no good, no good, no good. The, the standard Satmar Shita, in 1944, he said, Chatasi Ovishi Poshati. It takes a great man to say that I was dead wrong. My whole Shita is Krum. How do you say that? Krum. Crooked. Because I slandered, me and my people slandered Eretz Israel, therefore the Holocaust came. And he says, I have proof, because the Maraglim are also great rabbis. And they slandered Israel, the Holocaust happened. 600,000 Jews died. For the sin of the golden calf, only 3,000 Jews died. For the sin of slandering Eretz Israel, not 3,000 Jews died, 600,000 Jews died. Even though they spoke the truth, the Maraglim didn't lie. When you speak against Israel, even though it's true, brings the Holocaust then. And Rav Teichtel says, that's why the Holocaust came now, because we spoke against Israel and the people in Israel. And even though it's true, this brought the Holocaust. It is unbelievable. He wrote this in 1944, that his whole life was a lie and wrong. For slandering Israel, therefore God brought the Holocaust like he brought the Holocaust in the Dora Midbar. So for slandering you, Israel. What now what's amazing know? is, he, got, he was killed in Auschwitz. He was hidden by a goy in an attic in Hungary. After the war, his son came and the goy who was hiding him gave him the notes to this book. Now, he went, his father was the Av Bezdin of Satmar. So he went to the Satma publishing house to publish the book. They said, are you crazy? Get out of here. You hear? So he went to Musad Rav Kook. Musad Rav Kook printed this book. This book is more Rav Kook than Rav Kook. He outcooked Rav Kook. And this is a Av Bezdin of Satmar saying that me and my entire shita were dead wrong. We acted like Miraglim. So this book came out. I remember I, was, I grew up in Williamsburg. This book came out in 1961. I was 11 years old. It made such a sturm. How do you say sturm? A storm. If Rav Kook would write it, who cares? But this is a superstar of Satmar saying that the whole shita against Israel is dead wrong. So there was, a, there was unbelievable shturim. And the Satmar, they, they warned any bookstore that's going to sell this book, we're going to burn you down. So the book was blacklisted. Wow. You hear this? Instead, face the truth. This is your superstar Posek. You believe him in everything else. 
So what about this? So I grew up with these, and I asked him, this is your superstar posek. He says, oi, mi kennen nicht goide san, fin de greuse zuris arup fin dem zinnen. Graf Teichtel. I asked, no, this is your superstar posek. He says, your whole shit is dead wrong and full of uh, lies and deception. So they said, oi, nebech fin de greuse zuris, kennen nicht goide san, arup fin dem zinnen. You can't translate that in English. He lost his mind. He saw such horrors that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar off the walls. But he didn't lose his He found his marbles. He didn't lose his marbles. He found them. So why would they not allow any of their bookstores in Williamsburg to sell it? Because there's no atheist in a foxhole, and these guys are not in foxhole. Can you believe that? What a great man to admit Chatosi. Ovishi Poshati. You read the book, I made Aliyah when I read that book. How the worst Jew in Israel is more precious to God than the biggest Reb in Borough Park. That's the Iker of the book, Sarah. You hear it? This is a Haredi Satmar Av Bezdin, right? You got to get that book. It's called Aim Habonim Semecha by Rabbi Teichtel. It's in English? Rabbi Teichtel. The mother of children is happy. It's a pasuk in Tehillim. It's a pasuk in, uh, in Tehillim. If you want, I can bring you the book for Shabbat. Should I bring it to you? We got a deal. This way you have to let me in. Oh. That's a game changer, Sarah. You pick up this book, you won't be able to put it down. And you have to know he wrote it hiding in an attic. When the truth dawned on him, and my entire life was a lie. What a great man to admit that his whole life was a lie. Because they were saying Berlin is Jerusalem. Right. And so in English, was going to return to their Right. Rabbi Teichtel. Rabbi Teichtel, right? He was murdered in Auschwitz, but his son survived, and he had the book published. It's translated into English in uh, Musad, uh, Musad Rav Kook. So, Bli Nader, I'll bring you the book on uh, Shabbat. It's called Ema Bonam Semecha. Powerful book. What a book. Aim Habonim Semecha. Aim. A I M Habonim. H A B O N I M Semecha. S E M A C H A. Rabbi Teichtel. Okay. Mother of children. What? Any questions, comments? Yes, Shoshana, speak up. I, don't, I would like to understand how this Satmar of Beisdin had this epiphany when he was in the attic. What happened? He saw the horrors of the Holocaust and he, he said, just like the first Miraglin brought the Holocaust, that's why there's a Holocaust. Because we spoke against Eretz Israel. He saw the light. Hiding in the dungeon, he saw the light. Read the book. You read the book, you won't be able to put it down. He also said, Yeah. The sin was we built up the stepmother instead of the. Nochon? 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 Rabbi Teichtel. Rabbi Teichtel, the Av Bezdin of Satmar. Whenever the, the Satmar Rebbe had a Shaila, he would go to him. So he said, no, he lost his marbles. No, he found his marbles. He didn't lose his marbles. He found his marbles. And they say he lost his marbles. They said that about the Lord's marbles? Yeah. Before he died, the last, I don't know, yeah. five, 12 years, he was saying there's going to be a Holocaust. Shalashivas, every Shalashivas. The time predicted the Holocaust. And they said about him, he has gone completely dementiated, hallucinatory, and, and not much. At the Aguda Convention in 1930, Chavetz Chaim passed away in 33. Aguda Convention in 1930. So a lot of Haredis there spoke against Rav Kook. 
when the Chofetz Chaim heard it, he walked, he was already close to 100. He walked out from the convention. He locked himself in the hotel room. And he says, I'm not going back to these people that speak against the great Rav Cook, these slanderers. He refused to have anything to do with this Guda convention, refused to go back, wouldn't even daven with them. Daven privately, Abraham, in his own hotel room, the great Chofetz Chaim. But some people say, don't confuse me with the fact. Thank you very much.